Hello everyone, Stephen Clark here and friends, back with another news from all over Thailand and Southeast Asia. So what have we got today? The baht continues to lose. Is that good or bad news for Thailand? Indian tourist numbers to Thailand steadily growing. This is good news for Thailand. President Dietri of the Philippines speaks out, speaks his mind actually, and lets it all hang out. But first up, and the latest news from down south in Yala in Thailand, the land of smile and the terrorist attack. Is it war or is it terrorism at its worst? Tuesday night's horrific attack at a security checkpoint in Yala's Mung district left 15 villagers, Defence Force volunteers dead, five others injured in an attack. It is believed that the attack was in retaliation for deaths of two insurgents in Piatani Saiburi district last week. 11 locals, just volunteers, at the local checkpoint were shot dead. Four later died in hospital. Also, three others remain in hospital. Two other volunteers escaped unharmed. The National Human Rights Commission came out with a statement on Wednesday condemning the violent attack on the village Volunteer Defence Force that claimed the lives of innocent people and innocent volunteers has violated the principles of all religious and human rights. The National Human Rights Commission offered condolences to the families and victims. We here at Talk Back Thailand also offer our condolences to the families and the victims. We as concerned people hope that the responsible are caught and this insurgency will stop. As the blood pools were washed away, the feeling in the village is of disbelief as the residents are too scared to go out of their homes and also to tend their rubber plantations. Johnny Siam for Talk Back Thailand. And this just in, the latest on the massacre in the south of Thailand. Following the insurgent attack that killed 15 volunteers at a security checkpoint earlier this week, the army says it's not planned to lift the emergency law currently in place in the south of the country. Security officials believe that up to 60 people may have been involved in the attacks and that local villages are likely harbouring the fugitives. The Thai baht continued to lose ground as of yesterday after the Thai central bank cut interest rates. Other Asian markets dipped as well after the situation with US-China tariff wars continues. The Bank of Thailand cut rates for the second time this year with a benchmark low as the bank tries to manage inflation and rein in the strong Thai bar. The bank is also relaxing foreign exchange rates, allowing exporters to keep more of the profits overseas abroad. The Thai bike fell as low as 0.63% after the announcement. Its lowest level against the US dollar in weeks. The Thai baht has emerged as Asia's strongest and most stable currency this year. Unfortunately, the strong baht has hurt Thai exports and has crucified the Thai tourist industry. And this is two crucial components of the Thai economy. And some good news for Thailand. Indian tourist numbers or visitors to Thailand steadily climbing. The number of tourists visiting Thailand has doubled over the past half a decade and growing at an average of 15% per year, which is very good news for Thailand. One of the contributing factors is Indian people are now traveling more often. And one of their favorite destinations is Thailand. And Indian government has just recently released another 10 million passports. Thailand is a popular choice for first-time Indian tourists. The distance is short and travel is very easy. There are many flights to Bangkok from India, flying directly to Bangkok and many other internal places in Thailand. And also now Thailand is offering free visa on arrival for the Indians. Very good move. Projections for the next decade show that some 21 million Chinese tourists will visit Thailand compared to 14 million Indian nationals. And Indian and Chinese tourists are strong spenders and are quite welcome to bring their money to Thailand. Indian tourists are apparently not as sensitive as Chinese tourists. Most visitors are between the ages of 25 and 35, preferring to travel in a group or with friends. And some come to get married and have their honeymoon. And on an average, they bring in 27,000 baht each into the Thailand's economy. So for the Indian tourist, welcome to the land of smiles.
Johnny so I am reporting. The Philippines, entitled Banks, Islamic State, the Philippines and President Dante tells it as he sees it. Mind you, with this article, it is a little bit political and we take no responsibility of all the accuracy, but it's still worth looking at. President Dante said extremism prevailing in the world is the same as it takes over peace talks worldwide. President Dante said in his country, in the South, and fighting terrorism like any other country, he also added, a lot of the fighters, mostly Middle Eastern. President Dante actually, during the interview, asked why can't Trump be open and fight terrorism with Putin? Very good comment. Maybe that needs an answer. He also said, we need arms. And suddenly, two US senators and Congress said, they would not proceed in the guise of human rights. Countries like the EU and America are interfering in the affairs of other nations in the guise of human rights. He also asked the Congress, do you expect me to fight China in a war? We do not have cruise missiles. We don't have that capability. China has been permitted by the bankers to militarize and annex the South China Sea to take control of resources from surrounding nations. He also added that the Philippines is the only Christian nation in Asia. 